This is the last example for 3.1 day two. And what I'd like to do here is just to, you know, answer some really commonly asked questions about using logistic models and, and really with the calculator as far as that goes. You'll see some like this in your assignment as well as on the test coming up. So it asks us to um, the, the following to use the following equation it represents 20th century census data for the population of New York in millions. The value of t, or x as we're going to use it here, represents the number of years since 1800. That's an important thing to see right off the bat. So years since 1800 is, is what we're going to be looking at. Use the graph to answer the questions. Here is our function. Now, uh, this is a calculator problem, so I'm right away just going to go into my calculator and punch that in. Again, parentheses are important. Uh, it's kind of a mess with the, the details of this one, but I'm going to graph that now. I'm going to start with zoom standard. What you'll notice is that you probably won't see much because uh, we've got an interesting graph here and it goes up to a certain amount. It's it's We're just going to have to adjust the window a little bit to see what we can find out. So looking at that equation, one thing I would keep in mind here is that it goes up to 19.875 so that's the highest this will ever go that means that when I'm putting my window in here the highest Y value if I hit window my Y max should probably be 20 because that's a little bit over the limit to growth my Y minimum it's not going to go below zero so I'm just going to put zero in for that one now You'll also, you probably noticed here on the graph that it didn't really go far enough. We didn't see much. So I'm going to expand my X's a little bit. I'm going to start by going 20. I'm going to double it, see if that does anything. Well, at least we see a little bit of action on the end there, but let's keep going. I'm going to double it again. If you keep doubling it, you're eventually going to find what you need. Getting a little bit more, it's climbing a little bit more. I'm going to keep doubling it. Some of you are probably already doing this and screaming at the, at the screen, do this or that, but uh, I'm just going to keep doubling it because I know eventually it's going to get me where I, where I need to go. Now we're seeing a lot more of this graph and we're almost enough. I'm going to double it one more time so that we have plenty of information on here. But that can be the trickiest thing about graphing anything on your calculator is finding a window that works for it. So now that I've got a window that has all the important shapes to it, let's see if we can answer the questions. It says, what was the population of New York in 1920? Well, I'm gonna use trace on my graph to find that. But keeping in mind that's the number of years since 1800, so 1920 is going to be 120 years, or an x value of 120. So if I trace this, and I'm going around here, looks like I've got about uh, right there, somewhere in there. But I want to know exactly it, so if I'm in the trace mode, I'm just going to start punching in 120, hit enter, and then it'll give me my value. So that's 10.63 approximately. Now, it's not 10.63 people, it's in millions. So we're looking at 10.63 million people in 1920. The next one's a little tricky. The next one is when approximately was the population of New York 7 million? Again, keeping in mind that these numbers on the graph are in millions already, so we would have to abbreviate that as a y value of 7. So we want to know when is y equal to 7. Now we could get an approximate value by just tracing that. And so if I trace that, I get, you know, over here, I look for when y is about 7, so somewhere in there. It's pretty close. But I want to get it more exact. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back to y equals. I'm going to enter in 7 for my y2. That way when I graph it, I can just find where those two intersect. So second trace, they'll intersect. Use our calculator, first curve, second curve, and I guess. So they intersect at 98.58, so approximately when 
Uh, well, if we started in 1800, that means that if we add 98 to that, the it's going to be somewhere in the year, uh, sometime, let's say, halfway through the year 1898. And you don't need to get a whole lot more specific than that. Uh, you, don't, you know, the book might have it in terms of months, but I'm not going to be that picky. So just uh, estimate it in that way, but that's the kind of thing you'll be doing on a problem like that in your homework.